All right, time now for Johnny's Interactive Proper. Aisha is here. <laughs> of course, it's proper, proper. Yes. And you know how to join the conversation. It's on facebook.com slash join us on TV. On Twitter, is on join us on TV. And on WhatsApp, the number is 0560 800,000. Remember, you don't need to place a call. Just send a beautiful message. Let's keep the sweet conversation going. Now, the aftermath of a peaceful election has unfortunately been characterized by violence perpetrated by people suspected to be members of the two main political parties. Though the leadership of the parties involved have condemned such acts, the violence still persists. Question, do you think political parties involved have done enough to restrain their supporters from perpetrating such violent acts? No, from my own opinion, I think they are not doing enough. Even though uh, the president-elect has uh, discussed some of these issues with, their, uh, for his, with his political party, I think uh, he didn't do enough education. So I think he need, really need enough education. He have to educate um, his party members to cooperate. For me, I think this one, political parties do not need to talk to their people. We are mature. Those that are doing this violence thing, they are matured. At the end of the day, we finish voting. It's the peace that this country wants. And then at the end of the day, we all would have the peace that we expect. So the atmosphere should be calm. And I don't know what actually instigated what you call it, all kind of this violence. But I think they are matured. They should just calm down and then make sure everything that they do wouldn't, what do you call it, affect, what do you call it, the peace of someone. You, for all you know, someone is even there thinking about it, so and they will just start this thing. So they are mature. They need to think ahead. What is this violence bringing? It's even causing distractions and all over again. Things that they are, what do you call it, they are meant to be bring development. They are destroying them. They are, what do, they are matured. And I think the political party can do a little bit, but first they should have even given a pre-notice before after the election, so that they will have these ideas in their head that this is what our leaders have said. And I think it will sink very well in the hearts of what, what they call it, in the hearts of what they call the, the normal, what they call citizens or something. But they shouldn't, they didn't do that, they, they couldn't do it. They waited and then all these things happened. They should have given a, for a pre notice what the information. Please, after the election, we expect the atmosphere should be calm. I'm just thinking they should. The two of the parties should unite and just meet the parties like NDC, MPP, and just sit down and just talk to their party members. This is what is going on. We are enjoying a lot of peace in Ghana, which we don't, we can't afford to lose. So they should just take extra precaution not to bring war to Ghana after this election, which is going to help us a lot. Because if there is war, we can't go about doing whatever we want to do. As for me, I can't come to school. Maybe you can't also go to work. You'll be, uh, like, there will be a curfew, which won't go out freely, which will not help. So I just think they should come together and talk to their members. That's all. The president-elect indeed have to come out clearly and educate um, his uh, party members uh, to, uh, to be uh, acceptant. Like, they shouldn't over-enjoy themselves. I think the enjoyment is what is bringing all this violence. If they are able to enjoy to a certain level, they should, I, I, you know, life must go on. Of course, interesting comments from the streets. But Israel, I'm worried about this trend because, of course, the whole world is praising us for having a peaceful election. Yeah. And so um, some of these pockets of violence is it's just going to destroy. It's, not, it's, it's certainly not the kind of image we want to send out. We want to Especially send when out. we have uh, some equally powerful and positive images. Definitely. Like uh, President John Mahama inaugurating the transition team and, and being you know seen in photos with the incoming president and all that. These are the kind of images we want to send you out. Know, and, and he also going to uh, the Gambia to, talk to, to try him. to resolve their problems. You know, there. we don't want to have such problems in our country. Yeah. So I think the two political leaders should do more to ensure that uh, peace prevails. Okay, so uh, let's see the messages that people are sending on Facebook, Israel. Christy Boating says, in as much as I condemn these alleged attacks, I'm unaware, unaware of any media house pointing to one single evidence to buttress these charges. No arrest from the police, no official police complaint. So how do we reconcile that? Anybody can fake attack 
on him or her, and of her case, no exception. Ernest says, it's true both parties have suffered from these violence, but sometimes, but seems the MPP can be largely blamed for most of them. The leadership of the MPP and the president-elect have not shown enough will to calm down issues. I think the Ghana police must enforce the law heavily. And I feel that's the point, actually. The Ghana police service should enforce the law. That's all. Whether, exactly. Whether the person is MPP or NDC, just arrest the person and let the law deal with them. By it, Jeremiah says, these are criminals who are hiding behind politics to do their criminal activities. The law enforcement agencies should deal with them mercilessly. I can't understand why someone will get up and harm another person just because he or a political party has won or lost an election. Caleb says, but where's the president and the security agencies? We, why they can't sit down and just watch things unfold in this wrong direction. So President, you're still in power. Do something. And IGP to we beg you, uh, try and nip this in the bud. Eliasu says, as much as I condemn any form of attacks on suspected NC members, I implore them to also refrain from faking attacks on themselves. This is a grand agenda at uh, Couching Nanado as a violent person, which won't wash. Greetings to John Peter Mill, MPP Chair of Water Region, for a great job done in the region. And uh, Della Dem from Hohoi says, my question is, why are the police not making any arrests to bring the people to order? Let's be careful. If not, I still pray for Ghana. Of course, uh, pray hard. And we all praying too. Nothing will happen to us. Upon Ban Emmanuel from Tema Community 7 says, Aisha, believe me, most of these intruders are criminals. I expected the police to be on guard at such strategic places. And it's coming from Emmanuel from Tema. Um, this one is from who? You didn't add your name. It says, the police is not doing its work. They are afraid to be dealt with by the current government. If not, why can't they arrest the perpetrators? Why? Okay, I think that's a question that the Ghana Police Service must provide answers to. Also, the Africa Center for Energy Policy, ASEP, is warning of the possible return to the power crisis next year. This, according to them, is as a result of the unsustainable fuel supply, which has become more challenging. Well, we all know how it feels to be in the dark. So, we ask, how do you feel about this prediction? Okay, for me, I think Doomso will be coming back in 2017 due to the uh, infrastructure development and stuff. Because before a company needs to come out, the company has to get a, a power to supply him before he will be able to do what? Come out with this project. But without power, without enough power and you going out, building all sort of infrastructures, I think it will come back again. Actually, I would say, uh, I would say, the new government should also deal with it because uh, on his manifesto or other stuff uh, during the campaign, you can see the the, uh, the opposition party complaining about them. So whenever they come, they will, they will do something about it. So we, we the citizens of Ghana, we voted for them because we want we want them to end the doom so. That uh, they will have to continue the doom so for some uh, time before they will, uh, they will be able to solve that problem. So I think for this year or next year, the doom so will continue for some time before they will be able to get a solution to their problem. In, before the election, there was a whole lot of uh, what do you call it, a uh, demonstration and other stuff. You could also see the opposition party during the doom, so they were all part of the uh, demonstration. So, so far as they were part of the demonstration, we, are, we, are, we the citizens are also expecting them to also solve it as soon as they are in power. How worried are you? Well, I'm, I'm very wor worried because at least students, we are very worried. They should do something about it because sometimes it even uh, uh, goes to the extent of affecting our studies. So they should do something about it. We are pleading with them, the new government that are coming, they should do something about it so that it wouldn't exceed more than a year to be able to solve that problem. At least within next year, 2017, uh, by the end of 2017, they should be able to at least tackle that problem for us. That's what we are, ex we are expecting from them. Talking about the industry, I would think the, the government to do what? Subsidize the cost of importing in solar panels for the industries. So they will do something about that one. So they will, they will be able to purchase the solar panels. So that will help them in producing light for their organization. 
interesting comments on the streets of Accra. There are a lot more on our social media platform on Facebook. Is all. Let's hear. Kwesi Boateng says the NDC has never been fair to this country from the very day JM assumed office. This was preempted by the MPP, and uh, surely it is coming through. It would have been calamitous if NDC had won the election because all evidence shows they had lied about this power crisis. Uh, Boateng says there will be dooms on next year. That's a fact. So the minister must say the truth. Uh, uh, Bain, though, says Doomso can resurface and Jinapur can only give us hope for which he will not be accountable. Abdul Tsai says Nana and his competent government will stop it when it comes around and I hope they will not blame it on Mahama. Uh, TZTA says when will a think tank predict prosperity for Ghana? Pinson Ama says don't worry, Nana will fix anything broken. Francis Anochi says it's no news. To our illustrious president elect. NDC never leaves anything better behind before the exit government. Case study is 2001 for reference, but inshallah, Nanado will fix it and all eyes shall see and say, indeed, there's a God who has favored and approved <laughs> of the presidency of our showboy, Nanado. And this one from Brahim Okwabaji from GDG he says, the versing of an Ekufuadu doom. So I really would love to hear the comments. It will be interesting to see another episode of a doom. So Joy News Prime. <laughs> I love Oman Ghana. And it's from Brahim Okwabaji from GDG. And this one says, oh, so Muhammad didn't fix it as he said then. That is why he is voted out. And it's from Comfort from Bonahafa region. This one, you didn't add your name. He says, those who are involved in this bad act. Okay, he's, she's still talking about the first HR criminals. They don't belong to the NPP. The police should deal with them. And this one is coming from Ufuriwa. She says, I'm surprised Dumso is coming back next year. Because according to President Mahama and the NDC government, they have solved the energy crisis. So why is it coming back um, next year? And this one from who? Bambakia Summit from Fumbisi. He says... I never doubted the coming of Doomso at all because it's been clear that this government is only managing and giving it different names instead. Doomso has never gone anywhere. And it's from Bambakia Summit from Fumbisi. And finally, most of us enjoy using our smartphones, particularly our Android and iPhones, and sending messages to our family and friends. This has become easier, especially in the use of popular applications such as WhatsApp, Facebook, Messenger, Twitter, and Instagram. Interestingly, there is one feature which seems to fascinate most of us and makes communicating our emotions convenient and exciting, and these are emojis. It's therefore uh, no surprise that a London firm has advertised for an emoji translator in what is thought to be the first such job worldwide. Well, question I ask, do you understand these emojis and which of them is actually your favorite? Well, I really, I really don't understand them. But then, because of there's a picture, because there's a picture, at least you can get the, you know, the understanding of it. One, the smile. When you are talking, when you are chatting with someone, and say that that's why you suppose you have smile. And you are not there to smile to the person. You use that sign in, 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 in showing that you are not, you are not talking. You are not like, you are not. It's not in an angry form, but you know, in a smile form. Sometimes, when is you want to get some different mood, you can see that there's one there that is like angry. You know, the face looks like so angry. You use that one. Those are the, 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 the high fives too. Sometimes I use the high five too to appreciate something. I use them and I really understand them because pictures talks more than we talk. Maybe when you look at a particular picture, it will tell you what the picture is really talking about. So the images on my phone, I use the one that have the cry or the tears on it. Sometimes when somebody send a particular information to me, and I see that this information is too boring or something. That's what I use to tell the person that I don't really comply to what he's saying. It's like as if I should cry or something. I actually don't really use them a lot. But then I like the one with the... I don't really understand some of them. You can see some and then you don't know what it is. But then sometimes you see the ones like they are, whether they are crying or they are smiling. I don't know whether that is tears, tears of joy or what. I don't know. I don't really know the, the meaning. So I don't really like using them. But I see my friend use them a lot with different, different ones. But then sometimes I don't understand. The emoji that I like, as if it's looking the other way with like, or looking. Or looking. That, that emoji, yeah, it's really, it's really funny. They are just 
expressions, like if you really don't want to type much, you use them. Yeah. Yeah, I normally use them most of the times on my social media handles. And I think um, the one with the angry face is my favorite because it's, it's able to explain my reaction when I'm angry. And it makes the person I'm communicating to know that I'm very serious about what I'm talking about. Yeah, so that one is my favorite. Don't really understand most of them. Some of them are funny. And you know, like on WhatsApp, they come with upgrades. So um, they usually had, the, they normally had the real gun thing, but now it's been replaced with the, the water gun and it makes it very funny. So I, I like to use the one that actually portrays that uh, you've just loved and did some <laughs> or something. And then I like the thumbs up. Uh, I like the... I use a, a few of them. Which one is your favorite? Well, the one I, I tend to use a lot is a thumbs up. The thumbs up. I mean, yeah, I think a lot of people Yeah, it tends to come, become handy. For yeah. him. Prince Nuruddin writes, I was just... You know, if you could just scroll down, I want to see Prince Nuruddin's uh, <laughs> comments. Prince Nuruddin, very interesting indeed. This is my first time of hearing emoji translator emojis to be frank journeys. Prince says translating emojis is a job, hmm. but my favorite is the one with their with their thumbs up. up yeah. And then uh, Sadia Gunu, this one is a dancing one. <laughs> so she just puts <laughs> yep. That's the way it goes. <laughs> I think it's pretty cute. And then uh, Save Sweets. My two favorites, okay, yeah. so finger pointing and then jet and Kwesi Boating Ayepa. This one is the uh, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> this is my love, and, and then he continues, you know, he continues. He says, It means NDC has lost. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> and Okay, so I was just about to read this. My director says it's a wrap up. So that'll be it all for the interactive segment. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Have a great one. Mm -hmm.